Hello, I'm Jeff Pierce, and it's after two o'clock in the morning, and I'm in my office area, and it's been a roller coaster of a weekend because first we were told that Desi has been captured by the TPLF, and that went out over social media, and the mainstream news picked it up, and they ran with the stories for hours, uh, ignoring the fact that there was corrections from Ethiopian diaspora media and Ethiopian sources pointing out no well insurgents had come into the city. They had been repulsed by the NDF. And then you wake up the next morning and people are telling you, oh, Desi is captured by the TBLF. And then you talk to somebody and they say, no, it's not. Um, and back and forth it goes. And I don't want to get into all that because I don't have up-to-date information. And ultimately it doesn't matter because frankly, the disinformation war is as important as what's going on in the ground because it's all puppet theater for an audience of EU and US officials who can fit into a conference room. Um, and another part of it is, is to weaken morale and destroy morale and crush the spirit of those who want to put up a fight. Well, we can't let that happen. Um, and it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm busy looking at posts from the TPL of trolls and from the chorus of their advocates in the crisis management business. And so you have René Lafour and you have Rashid Abdi and you have Trombol all prepared to throw a funeral shroud over the Abdi government. And they still don't get it because this is a war for the soul of a nation and your ultimate enemy is the Ethiopian people who hate you, who hate you for 27 years of rule, who are not going to accept you trying to get power back. They will never let you win, ever. Um, history doesn't repeat, but can rhyme. And so I want to show you a few artifacts. Um, I don't have much, I mean, from my very first trip that I made, to Ethiopia in 2013, I was dirt poor. And so all I brought back was this sad little <laughs> uh, paperweight from Tigray, uh, from near the palace of Queen of Sheba, Queen of Sheba on one side and the King of King Solomon on the other. But as you can see, I do have books. Oh, and I also have this beautiful handmade bag which Arts TV presented to me as a gift when I worked with them on my second trip. But books, books tell us wonderful things. One of them is, is that we have been here before. Um, we've seen the most horrific, terrible massacres perpetrated. This is from Ciro Poglielli's book, um, which he was, his son was kind enough to let me use the photos uh, in my own book, Prevail. And this is also interesting. These are letters from John Robinson, the brown condor, the American who came to fly for Ethiopia and lead its small, tiny air force without guns. He made courier runs. Um, he flew the emperor back and forth between spots. But he became disillusioned with how the fight was going. And I want to read you something that he wrote from a letter, November 28, 1935. He wrote, really, Mr. Barnett, it looks like the beginning of the end for this country. To me, the officials have begun to lose their boisterous idea about Ethiopia can beat the Italians at any time. They realize now that they have been asleep for the last 40 or more years. They are wondering who will save them from the Italians instead of let the Italians come that they could beat them. The white people here, are realizing how frightened the government is getting about the conditions of the war, are taking every advantage of the government that they possibly can. That's from 1935. And he was wrong. He went home. He got a hero's welcome. Um, and he wasn't around for the fight that happened because Ethiopia, as we know, uh, went on to be occupied for five years by the fascists, but then uh, the Patriots kept fighting on, and in 1941, with the Liberation Forces, they repulsed them, kicked them out, and here, here's the Abyssinian Campaigns, the official history written by George Steer, one of my favorite writers, 
And this is one of my favorite photos. I use it in the book. And the caption says, Old Gojum rejoices. Inside the forts of Deborah Marcos, the patriots hear the emperor speak. So you know what you see here? You don't see Tigrans. You don't see Romo. You don't see Amhara. You don't see Garagi. You see Ethiopians. There's the moral of the story. Come together as one people. One people. One country. Fight. Fight as one people. Fight to the very last block. Fight to the very last mountain. Don't let the bastards win because that's what they want to keep you divided. But I'm busy reading these posts. And of course they have an effect. Of course they have a draining impact on morale. Can't let that happen. There's a certain current of desperation in all of these, you know, notes that say, oh, Abby's finished. Oh, it's over for the government. Oh, uh, and Rashid Abdi just posted a tweet saying the TPLF ran a clean military campaign. Who is he kidding? I've been to my Kedra. My team and I interviewed the victims. We went to Desi. We heard more horror stories from IDPs. I have an internal UN email that implicates the TPLF in terms of forced recruitment. I have accounts from, from a source in terms of how the UN's own staff are getting beaten up and deta detained by the TPLF. A clean military campaign? Does anybody buy this? Does anybody buy it when some jackass professor posts a photo of artillery in a street that isn't even Africa? It's from 2016 taken in Russia? And you guys are winning. Really? But you got to do that. <laughs> so tell me. Why is it that you got to use photos from Russia from 2016 and you always take photos of, hey, we're near Desi, but we don't see any photos of you in the streets of Desi yet. Okay, maybe you'll have some by the time this goes up. And you know what? It won't make a damn difference because the Ethiopian people will not let you win. There's a reason why the slogan is Prevail. First resist, then endure, then prevail. We're still in the endurance phase. Ethiopians will endure and they will eventually prevail.